Hi, welcome back to the channel, Michelle, and today I'm going to talk to you about our first week of homeschooling. This will be my fourth grader and K slash first grader I'm working with. If you're new here, I have a nine-year-old, five-and-a-half-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old homeschooling my two oldest. I will also be sharing their schedules and kind of what the plan is, at least for the first half of the school year. I'm going to talk about what each child does independently and with me, and then we'll cover group subjects, and when I'm talking about that, we'll be going over schedule as well. So one of the first things I would say is we do things a little differently, so we do not slowly add things in through the week. We don't introduce new subjects. We start Monday with everything we plan on doing for the entire week, our normal schedule of what it will be. We don't start in the middle of the week, kind of like an on-ramp I've heard it's called, where it's a slower paced start. For a couple reasons. One, we school year round, so it's not like we're transitioning. There's not large transitions we're having. It's just introducing some new curriculum, some new work. And two, mainly for my oldest, she does not do well with transitions, no matter how big or small they are. She finds them overwhelming. And if I added a new subject or a new area we're going to be covering every day, that would overwhelm her more than knowing exactly what her schedule will be and how it's laid out. She wants to know what's gonna happen next. My five and a half year old would care less. She's like, whatever, she rolls with it. One of the first things I did for my oldest was I created her a schedule and I just stick it in a little pocket protector so she can dry erase it when she wants to, when it's done, she doesn't have to. But I made this on Canva and again, it's really easy. This template was already here. The dates were, or the days of the week were already here. Her name's here, I just put a sticker over there for privacy. And then I just inserted her subjects. And it's nice because you can add little graphics into the template to make it more aesthetically pleasing. I'm definitely not one of those artistic planner type people, but I like being able to use things like different clip art images to make it a little bit more fun. And it's super simple. I'll leave Canva link down below. Again, it's a free website. Graphic design stuff you can do like this, really fun. So I will show a close up of that picture of what we're doing. So one of the first things we did with my old, or I did with my oldest is we went over what's expected for every day. We talked a little bit about curriculum and just an overall of expectations. I think, especially in college, the first day of school is like the syllabus. You go over the syllabus of the class and what the class is about, what you're gonna be doing, if you have any questions. It's kind of how I run the beginning of our Monday morning. You know, this is what the expectations are for this. Do you have any questions? Do you have any adjustments, open communication, that type of stuff. So after we get done going over schedules, we talk a little bit about our plan for the upcoming year. And one of those things we do is we fill out these first day interviews. And I've done this since my oldest was in kindergarten. So I have all of them from previous years. What's really nice is there's a first day interview and then there's a final day interview. So you can kind of see how their questions change. It also has things like height. So you can see how much they've grown over the year, which is really nice. So this is an example of my oldest and it is done by you know what grade they are which is kind of difficult since my middle child is kind of straddling two grades but we just go on from each one but again I fill it out for her <laughs> but it's nice to see it change from year to year and there is a part of it where you can print their picture on the background because we do take first day pictures as well and one of the things we do with our first day pictures after we fill out our interviews is we do a slideshow on the TV of previous year's first and final days of school pictures. So we do that to start getting excited about the year. Now let's go straight into our schedule. So I will start with my youngest because she has, my youngest daughter, because she has less work. So she again is doing her Dimensions KB, going really well. She's starting to get into word problems now, so she's enjoying that bit of a challenge. For handwriting, she's still using core knowledge skills, which again, completely free online. So very explode the code type stuff. It has, incorporates phonics and handwriting. So she will again do one of these pages every day. 
She is still finishing All About Reading, still going really well with her. We're getting through it. The only thing that added to this school year for her, because again, she's K through first grade, so we added core knowledge, listening and learning for first grade. And she's doing first grade because I looked at the kindergarten and it's way too easy for her. And it's funny because for the first grade, it's the first unit you're doing is fables. So we're talking about Aesop's fables. And one thing I do for that is I load all of the flip books or the things, the images she'll be looking at on her tablet. And then I take this galaxy tablet and I load the teacher guides on there. And what's really nice about this is it has a pen so you can actually modify the PDFs you download and make notes and different things like that and you can bookmark and highlight. So it's a really nice tool and I'm using it for her, for the teacher guides for me for a lot of the core knowledge stuff we're doing right now. So I have all the teacher guides saved on there and it's nice that I can annotate and make notes on it. But so for the listening and learning strands it's pretty much reading a story, um, going over new vocab words, talking about reading comprehension, getting into de deeper level critical thinking questions as well, not just like, oh, what did the main character do? <laughs> so getting them to really think about the story, we talk about character, plot, setting, all those things, and my only <laughs> issue with it so far is it's really easy for her so far. She, I don't know if that's because she's tailed along with us for so much of our homeschooling that she already knows what character is, she already knows what plot is, she already knows what setting is. It's not challenging her at this point, and at this point we can do about two units in one day. We can do two stories in one day in under 20-25 minutes. So I'm hoping it will pick up. I did look at the next level in uh, grade 2, and I know that's a little too far for her skill level. But so far it seems a little easy so we'll see how it goes again it's the first week so it might just start off slower more towards review and pick up but so far i think it's really good because again all about reading is teaching her how to read and phonics and things like that but the listening and learning of core knowledge again core knowledge is free is teaching her reading comprehension and vocabulary so it's really a more comprehensive all-around program combining the two so that is the only change for her. And now on to my oldest daughter. Again, we started the first week off by doing the review, the very last unit of dimensions and the test for the final, like the entire book type thing, going over that, making sure she remembers everything and it went really well. She's still choosing to do her worksheets, again, keeping up to date on her division and multiplication facts, and it's working. She can recall them pretty quickly. So things that got added, so she started her health unit, and again, this went well. She read the first chapter. We discussed what the chapter was about. There are some review questions at the end, so we just went over that. The only downside I see so far is the first chapter was talking about traits and inherited and environmental traits, different things like that. Something we've already covered in science, so it was review for her, so she was kind of like, I already know all this stuff. So I'm hoping we'll hit some topics we haven't covered yet so far. For vocabulary, she's switching. One week she will do this, one week she will do Sadler vocabulary. She started with word ladders this week, and she really enjoyed it. She likes the puzzle aspect of it and trying to figure it out, and she's only needed my help, I think, one time, so that's going really, really well. She likes it. I look forward to seeing next week how she likes the Sadler vocabulary. So on top of that would be her language arts. Again, until she finishes IEW, we're not doing any type of, we're not doing lightning lit till she finishes IEW because I feel like that'd be asking a little too much. This is going really well. I will do a more thorough review on this because I think it deserves its own review, but she's picking it up really quickly. She's running into the problem now that it's coming so quickly, I have to remind her to slow down when she's writing because it's just, it's all like pouring out of her and she's trying to get it all out. So her writing goes really fast. So I'm <laughs> reminding her to slow down even though it's coming so quickly to her. For grammar, 
We are doing um, Life with Clay Thompson Practice Island. She does two of these a week. And how that works out is it just has sentence practice. So she does the an sentence analysis. So parts of speech, parts of the sentence. Is it simple compound? Does it have prepositional phrase? Different things like that. And again, these things are pretty easy for her because we've gone over. I did print out the simple sheet of the abbreviations for things so she doesn't have to write out the word pronoun every single time she does it. I did also print some of the notes just to, in case she forgets what a simple sentence is, what a compound sentence is. Just a reminder if she needs it in there because again, she does this independently. I just copy the sheets, give it to her, and she does two of those sentence and analysis a week. Again, going really well. Spelling, she is almost completely done with level one. And again, there's only, I think, one new thing that we encountered that she didn't know previously. Again, she reads a lot. So I think a lot of the spelling just comes naturally to her because she sees the words so frequently. But I do think this is helping explain some of the rules behind the words. So that is everything my oldest is doing independently. Now for group subjects, we are doing Torchlight level three. And I have to say this went extremely well. I was a little concerned with the schedule because I was afraid it might be too much because we instead of doing like we did last year, instead of doing history one, uh, once a week, you do it twice. So you're doing two chapters a week. And I thought that would be a little bit overwhelming, but again, we don't do all of it. We don't do the writing, language arts portion of it, and we don't do the science. So we do, I like the format of level three that it's just seems to be scheduled a lot better and it's not so overwhelming because you do have a lot of components to it. One thing we are learning this year is Shakespeare. This is for me to read and to help the kids learn Shakespeare. So I read the first three chapters. I really like in Torchlight how as the instructor, you're assigned chapters to read as well to prepare you for lessons. So I started this and I really like it. I think introducing Shakespeare to younger children is a difficult concept for people to understand, especially me. I encountered it in high school and college, never in my younger years. And it can seem like, how do you talk about Shakespeare and the plays and how intricate they are with younger children? So this has been really helpful. On the same line of Shakespeare, we did, this was the book for the, from Torchlight that was recommended for the week. My kids didn't like it. It's not so much the life of Shakespeare, but just what was going on with theater in that time. There is some aspects of um, Shakespeare in here and his life, but it's mostly what's happening in the time period. And it was really lengthy and kind of dry. So my kids weren't the biggest fans of that. So I would not recommend that one if you're doing a Shakespeare unit. Some things that have gone really well. This is our read aloud that goes with the week for Torchlight. And this is going really well. It's about a girl who moves into a house and finds out that there might be a missing diamond in, hidden in the house and it's somehow sh tied to Shakespeare. And it's really interesting because it brings in the perspectives of Shakespeare theory of whether Shakespeare was a real person or it was different authors that used his name, that Oxford versus Stratford theory. It goes into that really well. And my oldest never wants me, or listening to the audiobook, never wants me to turn it off when we do it. We just do three chapters a day. And one thing we've changed this year is we've changed read aloud to before bed. I think, like I said in previous videos, I have a two and a half year old and we have to do a lot of our bulk work while he's napping. And read aloud is something that can be done later in the day while he's awake. So that's worked really well and it kind of calms everybody down. One of the other things that goes with it is a stage full of Shakespeare and it's kind of like condensed Shakespeare stories. So for the first one, we read Much Ado About Nothing. And I like the condensed version, I like that it's got a cast of characters, so when we were reading the book, I could point to different characters because it can be confusing when there are so many different characters. 
My nine and a half year old had no issues understanding this and the characters and everything. It was probably older over my five and a half year old's head. It was just too many characters going on. But it was a nice introduction to the play. So that is our Shakespeare. We also started Women in Art. And again, it being, I think we cover one or two artists a week and we just talk about kind of their life. And then we do look online some of their artwork. And it's funny because my daughter said that a lot of these people are featured in her books, Rebel Girls too. So she already knew some of it already. The other thing we are doing is history. We are doing early modern. Uh, I think this is really good. I think this is actually done better than Middle Ages. The We do the audiobook, the voice actor, they changed it for early modern. She does a much better job of enunciating and slowing down her speech. I really like that it's broken into two chapters a week because the chapters are a lot smaller. I think on the audiobook they're probably under 10 minutes, which before they were 20, 25 minutes, I think. But the pictures are really good in the book, so we follow along on the book. And it's not, it's you know, maybe four or five pages. So we did two chapters this week. While we're listening to the audiobook, my kids have the option of doing crossword puzzles, Legos, or coloring pages. We did get the activity guide to go with Curiosity Chronicles. So my oldest is doing the crossword puzzles and my youngest really enjoys the coloring pages. I thought this was interesting because we were learning about Bloody Mary and history and my daughter colored her all red and then we learned about Queen Elizabeth. So she's having fun with that. I do like there's something for her to do. And I, like I said before, I do think the chapters are divided up into an easier way for kids to understand it. It's not so much information like it was last year. The, we also, in the activity guide, we do the comprehension questions. And it's not just comprehension, like when did this happen, but what do you think about this? What would you have done during that time? I do like the culture corners as well. We talk about art, theater, literature, different things going on in that time period as well. And you can see we the art section for that was Shakespeare. So that was a really nice tie-in, but we are really enjoying this so far. Something they really enjoyed learning about in this, and it was our activity, because we do probably one activity a week that ties in with our history, was learning about, I believe it's called anamorphosis, where you can look at something at different angles and see something different. So for example, in this famous painting, you can see a skull and how artists would often hide details in it to tell about that time period but we learn how to make three-dimensional shapes by drawing them. And I have to say my kids were obsessed with it. They spent like an hour drawing three-dimensional shapes everywhere and how cool it was. So it was nice to have that tied in and something they really enjoyed that I never would have thought they would be so fascinated with. Something else we're doing with Torchlight is something called Innovators. It's a book, I'll put the picture here, where you talk about the difference between inventions and innovation and improving on different inventions and the first assignment for the week was to look up a famous invention and talk about how it got started and how it is today has it changed has it been modified so my kids chose the slinky so we learned about the history of a slinky we actually have a slinky in our house so we played with the slinky we learned, and it went really well with this book, about how <clears throat> the Slinky was a failure. It was somebody was trying to invent something else, and it just happened to turn into a kid's toy. We watched the original commercials for it, talked about how it's changed. So I really like that Torchlight is bringing in this growth mindset, this deep, deeper level of thinking. It's gone really, really well. To go with that, we read about a child and how they lived during that time and what things they would have experienced. So again, that's just two pages. The only other aspect is art. So Torchlight suggests Painter's Lab. And again, I use the ebook from our library to access it. So it's just learning about a specific painting technique. So the first thing we learned about was watercolor blending. So this was the lesson. It was a chameleon. This is what my five and a half year old and I did together. 
And I really liked how we did the watercolor blending. And as you can see, my oldest really enjoyed the adding details. So that was just a fun lesson to get into. Now there isn't really a lot of art history or the foundational basics of art taught in the painter's lab. It's mainly just learning how to paint. So we do incorporate this as well once a week. And for example, we did an Eric Carl study. And this is an example of what the kids did. They painted tissue paper and cut it out in different shapes and then made their own picture. We've also done make your own sun catcher. So I do like how it's a brief lesson on something and then an activity. So I think this is providing a good foundational part. And again, we have the first, second, third, fourth version, fourth grade version of this. This is grade one, I believe. So we just include that. So we do painter's lab once a week. We do a art short instruction. And then something my oldest has been doing is this as well. I saw this in, I believe, the mom uh, librarian. And it's really fun. So it gives some more detailed instruction for a bit older. I believe it says, yeah, eight to 12 years old. So this was the assignment. It goes through step-by-step step how to do something. And this is how it turned out. I think it went really well. It's fun. One of the things we didn't do very much of last year was art. So I'm glad to be bringing in these different parts of art to really have help my kids get a better understanding of art. So the only other thing we are doing is science. So for science, again, we are still using our human body unit and we are using core knowledge again, free online. So what I like about core knowledge is that every year it builds upon more knowledge, but you can go to any year and start or pick things you choose. For example, we're doing human body. So I started at kindergarten level, pulled their human body unit for each grade level and we just work our way through it. And it's nice because it's building upon what they already know. So we've been doing that. This has been really good. My kids really enjoy that it's glow in the dark stickers. <laughs> That's a nice supplement. So we'll read the book. We have our little skeleton diagram we've had forever, probably since my oldest was really little. I got this at Toys R Us. That tells you something how old it is. But we're just having fun doing different models. We, I got this book, it goes really well with it. And again, check out my video, I'll link up above, and it talks about each experiment and how I divvied it up and decided. But things like this, Core Knowledge has their own little cutouts and activities you can do. But if I find a really good experiment, I also include that. For example, we did breathing and lungs. We made a little model of how the lungs work. And that came from this book, which I thought was really cool. Something we're doing with Core Knowledge is they are doing body outlines. I probably have to stand up for this one. But they are taking every layer of their, they did an outline of their body. And we are doing, when we talk about a system, we are adding a system every time we do it. So for example, we did the skeletal system, we did the muscles, and we just finished with circulatory system. So every week we add another system. <laughs> and they've had a really fun doing that. Our latest experiment is we did blood and circulation. So we took water beads, red water beads, and we have, these are the red blood cells that carry oxygen. These are the white that um, fight against infection and germs. So we have the platelets in here. And it was really fun because the kids could, we talked about different situations. So if you got a cut, how would your body react? And they would put the white blood cells in there and the platelets would start surrounding. If you had a clogged artery, we talked about how health and nutrition and how, depending on what you eat, can lead to different problems in your circulatory system. So they showed what would happen in your circulatory system if there was a clog in there. So it was nice to have the hands-on experience. So the funny story with this is though, I did, it's my first time using water beads. It's something I've always avoided because again, I have a two and a half year old that puts everything in his mouth and a dog also eats everything. So I didn't really want them in my house. So I bought a small container of them and I made the whole container thinking, oh, they're small, right? 
I have, a, I have this giant Ikea bin, and then I also have a giant Tupperware bin full of water beads. So if you have any uses for water beads besides sensory things for little kids, let me know, because I have a ton and I have to figure out what to do with all of them now, because they're already all made. So the only other thing we're covering is this is one of the things we're reading, which is really nice. We're talking about true stories of people who change the world by failing first. I think this is a really good book to encourage a growth mindset about how failure doesn't mean you're stupid or wrong. It's just a stepping off point. So we've really enjoyed that. I would say the first week off has gone really well. I think we're all excited for new and different things. I think the torchlight schedule was done really good this year, a lot better than it was in previous years. It's a lot easier to handle. And the only difficult part is the first day my two and a half year old decided not to nap at all. So that was fun. But we tend to get most of our work done in probably two, two and a half hours. And again, I'll, if you see that schedule, it's not all at once. It's all sectioned off really easily. And it's gone really well. It feels like a nice relaxed thing. We're usually done by one o'clock. Kids can do whatever they want after that. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. If not, thanks for watching.